Foot Clan, I've been using HelloFresh for a while now. And let me tell you, if it was a staple in my kitchen before, it's a must-have nowadays. And if you haven't yet, you got to check it out. America's number one meal kit. Right now, you can get 12 free meals, including free shipping, when you go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I'm your host for today, Mike the Fantasy Him and Wright, joined by none other. None other than my best friend oh, yeah. in the in the whole world. Oh, man. I'm so happy to be here with uh, my best friend in the whole world right now. Jason Moore, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? That is, that is my birth name. That is your birth name, and you can find you on Twitter at FF Hitman. And they can find you at Jason FFL. Oh, what teamwork we're using today. Welcome into the show. It's free agent time, everybody. <laughs> look, this is exciting, and can I just say, can I just say this, because I know, look, peel back the curtain here for all the, the listeners, Mike is super pissed off, Mike is so disappointed, <laughs> Mike is like, we're, we're recording, and this is just, we are so spoiled that we want more news, we have a ton of free agents to talk about today, but we are not, we're not happy, we're like, I want more, where's the big name, where's, where's the giant, you know, why aren't all five big name wide receivers signed already, it's been Hours. We are recording this Monday afternoon slash evening ish, uh, and I'll, I guess I can say this: where I'm perturbed, Jason, is the biggest free agent that we're going to talk about has some ramifications for my dynasty team, and I'd rather not spend more than two seconds on it. But mm. but we will. Uh, welcome into the show, everybody. Uh, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to watch the show i mean speaking of watching i haven't seen jay Grizz, i uh, like me personally right. in i don't know like a year he he took well i don't want to yeah i mean we did we try to keep things under wraps but he had a bad year with covid this year <laughs> and so you know now he is back in sure. studio he's doing well and um now that we're in studio and andy holloway Yes, uh, our fearless father mm -hmm. is um, with some family right now. We get to see a cardboard bear cutout on the show. <laughs> we absolutely do. Jason already gave the handles. You can follow the show at the FF Ballers. Check us out on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And if you want to see a little bit of our personal lives, Instagram.com slash it's the same as our Twitter handles. I'm FF Hitman, Jason FFL at Andy Holloway. Uh, just before we jump into the news, just a little quick, uh, you know, like because when you're on when you're on Facebook and you're on these the social platforms, and they're like, you know, do you remember last year? And they give you a throwback. Sometimes people oh, yeah. do Throwback Thursday. Wasn't some last year on this day pretty cool? One year ago today, which and it was just the two of us and the bear. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, that's when the DeAndre Hopkins trade happened. Forever uh, and Lord. I think the Texans fans have had <laughs> enough of that. I don't. They they don't mind it anymore. They're they're gone. <laughs> the <laughs> Texans fans. Yes. What they're actually they, a lot of them have accepted the official fantasy footballers invitation to join us as Arizona Cardinals fans. That is true. I've seen a lot on Twitter. Make sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. UltimateDraftKit.com. The UDK Plus has dynasty content right now, and the team is ferociously dare I say, ferociously making sure that this thing this thing stays up to date as the free agent signings are happening or as it would be not happening right now. Uh, but that thing will be up to date the second you get in there. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. The Saints have their own block in this news section. Because they have been busy. The big one, of course, Saints quarterback Drew Brees, one of the real ones. First ballot, Hall of Fame, Super Bowl winner, 
super studly NFL quarterback. He is retiring. He played for 20 seasons? He, well, oh, my – whoa, brother. That is what? a lot. When he came into the NFL, there had been one player who ever threw a 5,000-yard uh, season – is and, that true? And he has done it five times since he retired. Oh, my god! Great job, Drew Brees. We, uh, we had a lot of fantasy fun, thanks to you. And, um, Absolutely. I am so happy that you hung him up. It was time. It was time. It, it was absolutely time, but Drew Brees will never be forgotten. Number one in passing yards, completions, completion percentage, second in passing touchdowns. Now – Tom Brady might break a few of those. We'll see how things go. Yeah, he's got go. like 12, 13 seasons left, so <laughs> probably. Uh, but Drew Brees, salute to your service to the NFL. Enjoy your time with your family. So, now yes. it gets interesting for fantasy. For fantasy football, yes. Who's the quarterback, Mike? Is it Taysom Hill? Is it Jameis Winston? I feel like we did this before. Well, and what if I told you, Jason? Okay. That the Saints have signed quarterback Taysom Hill okay. to a four-year, $140 million contract Whoa. extension. Incredible. I guess he's the starting quarterback. I mean, no doubt. Yeah, but uh, here's the details. Every year of the deal is voidable, and it feels like this extension simply spreads out Taysom Hill's cap hit. Because if you remember, they like they gave him a really big contract Last year, I, I do remember mocking that. Yeah, and yep. so obviously the Saints are in uh, just just cap purgatory. They are held hostage What's this right button now. Do there you go. <laughs> what? Well, we're figuring it out live. It would. There was a button labeled "cha ching." I'm used to the there. There is the Brooks drop, the money drop, but there was a button that money, called. Money, 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 money. Yes. Thank you. But so, there was a button that said cha-ching, and I had no idea what it would do. So Taysom Hill had had the big payment. He's obviously uh, getting a long extension so they could spread out the cap hit. This is going to be bad for the Saints for a while. Like They, they still think they're contenders, and they've got enough pieces on the roster where they will be a good team, and they're going to they're gonna try to win games. They are not about that rebuild. But I think they're going to find that another couple of years as they continue to struggle with what they got themselves into with cap trouble, it, it's not going to go that well. In which case... Maybe. So so with the four voidable years from Taysom Hill, that actually says that Jameis Winston might be the starting quarterback of the future. Yes. Uh, Ian Rappaport saying Jameis Winston is likely the starter. They have been working on a deal for a little bit, still working on it, at least at the time of this recording. So we just don't know what the Saints are going to do, except finding this in incredible loophole where you give a contract to player that's not really a contract. We'll see if the wonder, NFL has anything to say about that. I wonder what the limit is. Like, Could you just do a 100-year contract? <laughs> it was like, this dude, we found the ultimate loophole. We could spread this over 100 years, no problem. Buccaneers have signed Tom Brady to a one-year extension. So he will be back at least for a uh, – looks like another couple years for the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they try and run it back. Allen Robinson, who was, uh, dare I say, unjustly franchised, Chicago, shame on you. And, yes, I'm talking to you, oh. Bear, Cardboard Bear and Bears management. How dare you? Wait, you're blaming Jay Grizz? You should be consoling Jay. He did nothing wrong he's, here. Well, he's happy. He He's happy that Allen Robinson is under the franchise tag. I'm just shaming everybody that I possibly can for my man, Allen Robinson. Uh, but Robinson has zero plans to sign the franchise tag. He has until the 15th of July to actually sign that, which means that he still has some leverage as they're trying to figure out what is happening in Chicago, who's the quarterback, because Mitchell Trubisky is not. Yeah, from reading a, a, a couple of articles on this, there is a chance, and, and we're just bringing this up now because obviously there's dynasty players and implications here, there's a some percentage chance that he could actually hold out through camp, hold out miss preseason, hold out in season. We saw Le'Veon Bell obviously miss an entire season not wanting to play for the franchise tag, um, and he's not happy. But as of right now, Obviously, he can wait, see what they do in the draft, see what they do with the quarterback position, um, and wait to sign the franchise tag. But he's uh, he's not happy about being a bear right now. 
All right, I'm going to hit this button, Jay, and I apologize that the the drop says frenzy. Okay. Cause oh. it's, because it's not a frenzy. This is a frenzy. There's a lot of news. This is a lot of news? This is, there's some, there's some, there's two big names. Free Agent Frenzy. The, I'm so sorry, Mike. The Packers, good for them. They have re-signed running back Aaron Jones to a four-year, $48 million contract. All of our predictions were incorrect. A.J. Dillon, master of the quads, second-round pick, will now return to the backup role. Stupid freaking Packers. Uh, but also don't hear what I'm not saying. Aaron Jones is fabulous. He is an incredible player, and he's going to be fantastic uh, for fantasy purposes. Just so everyone is clear. Yes. The sadness is just solely that you have A.J. Dillon on your dynasty team, and you're that, very disappointed that he's not like a big breakout star thing this year. That is accurate. That is accurate. For, <laughs> so for everyone else, like I'm sure some of you out there can it's relate. It's not everyone else. There are other people who have no, Dillon on their team. That's what I'm saying. Some people out there can relate. They have Dillon, and they don't have Aaron Jones, and, and there's dozens of you, and you're all sad. <laughs> Um, but the, so thank you. Feel our pain. The reality here, this is a great thing for Aaron Jones. Yes. Um, now they did lose their center who is one of, if not the best center out there. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's great news for Aaron Jones. Uh, I expect that, you know, that Jamal Williams has already said, uh, he's put out on social media that he's not coming back. Mm -hmm. So this is great. This is still good for AJ Dillon. Not great. But A.J. Dillon is going from a third stringer who spent the majority of last year not on the field at all to now being that two in the one-two punch the way that Jamal Williams was. But I expect, because we saw games that Jamal Williams er, missed, and the routes run looked really, really good. There were, I mean, Jamal Williams was still running like 35% routes run of his snaps. Jamal Williams is, is an excellent pass catcher. And and, and if you have AJ if you have AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones as your two main options, who are you going to run out there to be the pass catcher? It, and it's not that Dillon's a bad one, but Aaron you're going to go with Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones managers were so frustrated every 2 minute drill yes. when they're like, "Oh, this is fantasy gold. The 2 minute drill is fantasy gold for offenses." And there's Jamal Williams running the 2 minute drill. That will be Aaron Jones next year. So, uh, I I think this is good for Aaron Jones uh, if if anything, I think he gets a bump up from last year and it's good for AJ Dillon versus last year. So, you know, be happy, Mike. I I'll be happy. But AJ Dillon had a he had a ticket booked. You know how like they're sending the first people to space. The mm -hmm. they're not first people. I mean, uh, like they're sending civilians. I mean, he could have been on a rocket ship, and now he's just kind of in in middle class on the on the airplane. I get it, but I also think there's a good chance the first people to space might die. So I mean, you know, this is safe. This is this is a safe route for him because think about uh, you know his comp is who Derrick Henry. Right. Derrick Henry did nothing for many, many, many years behind DeMarco Murray. Uh, save those legs, let him continue to grow into his man body, and then dominate when, if he, when he's older. If he is still growing into a man body, he's going to weigh 475 pounds by the time he's a mature grown-up. He's going to look like Derrick Henry. He's going to look like the Hulk. Uh, the Patriots have not been quiet <laughs> during the free agency period. They have opened up the, the vault. And I re I realized something, Jason. So we have Big Shimmy, right? Mm, okay, yeah. Bill Belichick, though, so with, with the stimulus, I'm calling him Big Stimmy. Big st Oh, the st this is stimul stimulus money? <laughs> yes. He's well, I didn't realize that the NFL franchises get that. But they're they're part of it, yeah. To illustrate that, he has spent more than – in, in the first day of free agency – the Patriots, and we knew that they were going to make a big deal because obviously they had a lot of cap room and a lot of needs. But the last decade of free agency, they have spent over half in this day what they spent in the last 10 years um, uh, in the free agent market. So they have made a big splash. Let's talk about what they've done. 
Patriots have signed tight end Jonu Smith to a four-year $50 million deal with $30 million guaranteed. Uh, this is the most that Bill Belichick has ever, in the Bill Belichick era, he's ever spent on a pass catcher. Uh, Third-round pick, Devin Aziazi, uh, Dalton Keene. Apparently they did not get enough out of those two guys that they would be moving forward with them. You think? <laughs> You, they did. Ozzy Ozzy caught a touchdown, which is like 30% of Cam's passing touchdowns last year. Here, here's a stat to illustrate it. The 2020 Patriots had the fewest fantasy points for any tight end group over the last five years. All right. They, it, they, didn't, they didn't have tight ends. It makes sense. Where are you on the Johnu signing? Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing people all over oh, the place yeah. there on are social people media. Hot and bothered, people upset. Um, you, you know from this last off season, if you've been around with us for a while, um, I, I am a John U. Smith believer. I believe in the talent, the athleticism, and he's getting paid big money. And my official analysis point of view as of day one is really, really, you went right to a fart. Sam. I went right to a fart. Look, you, you, you're leaving a team, right? That had a lot of a lot more passing volume, a lot more passing touchdowns, a much better passing quarterback in Ryan Tannehill over the last couple of years. And now you're inheriting a team that, one, they've, they've spent a lot in free agency on their defense. I think their defense is going to be outstanding this year. Uh, Cam Newton, you know, we've joked about him being DUN just done. He's certainly not going to be throwing for 4,500 yards or even 4,000 yards. He averaged 191 yards a game in his first – that was the 10-week stretch where he was doing great, and that was 191 yards a game. He's not throwing a bunch of touchdowns. Like, the fantasy – all I care about is fantasy. Is this a good signing for the Patriots? Yes. Is he a good player? Yes. Is he going to help the team? Absolutely. Is he going to help my fantasy team win games? Probably not. That's my official stance. I am interested. Uh, Bill Belichick clearly had an affinity for John who he, there are many quotes out there of him expressing his uh, admiration for John who, especially after the catch, he made sure that he went out and got him. Speaking of other things that they've done, Cam Newton was re-signed to a one year contract. It can be worth 14 million. The baseline of it is not, uh, going to be that I would still expect them to try and draft the quarterback of the future. I agree. But. I will say Cam Newton actually with an off season with the team, uh, his second year in the offense, the Patriots offense is it, it, the legends are told of how hard it is to learn. And that's just for wide receivers. A quarterback hasn't had to really learn this system for a long time that we've ex we've seen, you know, them have to get on the field and the Patriots have agreed with, they've agreed with their wallets that, they needed to rebuild because they also signed Nelson Aguilar to a two-year two deal. They signed Kendrick Bourne from the 49ers to a three-year deal. Now, those aren't guys that will make you say, yeah, well, that's not Kenny, not, yeah, that's not Kenny, Kenny Galladay, Galladay, Will Fuller. I get it. But Nelson Aguilar, he, we, he was talked about all the time on this show last year of someone who looked like they're actually – it's actually good. Yeah, he's, maybe he is good. Maybe he can be a consistent player. And Kendrick Bourne is the same thing where – yeah, he was buried on the depth chart, but whenever Kendrick Bourne had an opportunity, he would come through and he would be a reliable player, which is far more than you can say for any of the Patriots pass catchers that he had last year. I and Cam Newton. I do completely agree. Uh, when it comes to Cam Newton, I mean, last year you're throwing to Jacoby Myers, Demir Bird. James White was the third target on that team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th this is an upgrade, but... I mean, obviously, it's. I mean, you're hoping that this is like when the Rams brought in Robert Woods, and we said, "Look, Robert Woods is a good player. He's mm -hmm. been buried on a depth chart, but he's actually good." Uh, and then he goes, and he was good. He was good for fantasy. But the difference being, they also had a complete shift in philosophy. That was when they brought in Sean McVay. This is this is the same Patriots team of last year, adding mediocre pieces. I'm not thrilled. I do think it's good for Cam. And remember, Cam, to start the year, the first 10 weeks that I was just talking about, there were only two games that he wasn't a quarterback one because he runs the ball, has rushing touchdowns. Well, that was all he could do last year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not super in on anybody here. I, I expect it to be still an anemic offense. All right. Uh, let's see. Let her, let, before we move on, uh, we want to thank today's sponsor, Jason. I think you have someone you want to thank. 
Oh, yeah, I do. I want to thank, firstly, for my monthly uh, wine subscription. Yeah, uh, I mean, Heck apparently. Yeah. Uh, as as we all know, trying different wine is one of the best ways to find new favorites. But sometimes when you're actually trying to buy new wine, it doesn't pay off, like literally, because you're having a guess on wines. But firstly, firstly, you're like a VIP, right? You've got top-rated wines that they're curating for you based on your opinions, and you know, I you sign into the app, super easy. You rate the wines, then they keep sending you better and better wines that are actually tailored to you. It sounds like they're like the Skynet. If I could for wine, if I could say sommelier, or what, I don't know what? the word. I don't know the. <laughs> what the, word is that? That's like the wine person, like at fancy restaurants. They have a a sommelier. I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But this is like that. This okay. is like the this is the fancy wine person it's making a wine, me a VIP. You, you, you've got a wine guy. A wine guy. Right. They're going to send personalized selections from the top vineyards right to my door. Every bottle's handpicked by experts. You get incredible savings, much lower prices because they're dealing directly with the winemakers and they're using an algorithm and feedback to curate wine. So check it out. Discover a new wine like a VIP by becoming a First Leaf min member. Join today and you will get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. It's tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Vincero for sponsoring the show. You, you've heard us talk about them quite a few times. Vincero watches, they're, like, they're helping you find a watch that's stylish, bold, and built to last. And it's not going to break the bank because, they're look, those watchmakers, they are after your money. Not Vincero. They want to help you out. They create exceptionally crafted watches, and they do it without breaking the bank. Dude, I mean, yeah, I mean, seriously, if you're on the YouTube you got. I mean, mine's in I the happen mail. to You've be. Wa yours. I happen to be wearing a brand new Vincero watch right now. It's hot. It, it is extremely hot. It is. It's. It's like they said. It's bold. This is. This is a good, solid watch. It is a perfect con conversation starter with collections ranging from dress watches to sports watches. Vincero has a style for every look, occasion, and price point. Even if you claim to, the, the, you're not a watch person. I get it. Vincero has styles for men and women, as well as an array of accessories like wallets, bracelets, extra straps, sunglasses, and those are all made with the same incredible quality as their watches. They have over 26,000 five-star reviews on their website. We know how hard it is to get a review. No, we don't. Our reviews flow in. <laughs> Thank you, like so I was, I was trying to prove a point for Vincero. Well, no, look, we're great. They're great. This yes. is, I mean, we don't got to lie about nothing. And look, you can get free shipping, free returns for 365 days, and a warranty on your watch for up to five years. That is wild. Do not overpay for a watch that looks cheap and disappoints. And exclusive for our listeners, Vincero is offering 15% off of their already affordable watches. Go to VinceroCollective.com slash fantasy. Don't you dare pay full price at checkout. Get our link in the code is fantasy. It will be auto applied at checkout. VinceroCollective.com slash fantasy. This is a buy you will not regret. Jason. Yes, Mike. As we were talking and thanking our sponsors, we had a little bit more news break. I saw that. The Jaguars are on the board. They, they have made some moves. Number one, they added Philip Dorsett, wide receiver, speedster. Okay. Look, that's fine. There, there was a really strange social media war going on of rumors of uh, there was whispers from the bushes that the Jags were going to send DJ Chark to Baltimore for some picks, and then a ranking official from the Jaguars got on and puffed his chest up. Hundred percent not true. False. I mean, like this dude was about. <laughs> this dude was all about it. So they had a Philip Dorsett. Whatever, that's fine. That's great for Trevor Lawrence or whoever they choose to Trevor, take. We can just say Trevor Lawrence. I'm just we, we got to build some some suspense into the draft. No, the NFL's got to do that. We don't got we can be real with the people. Okay, fine. When when Trevor Lawrence is there, he'll be glad that Philip Dorsett is there. However, here's the more interesting piece of news. Carlos Hyde mm -hmm. has been signed to a 2-year, 6 million dollar deal. Now that's certainly Chump change when it comes to an NFL salary. 
But Carlos Hyde on the field for Seattle last year was good. Was good. He still had juice. And James Robinson has been the hottest topic for Dynasty. What do you do with an undrafted uh, free agent who came in and was excellent? He was Robinson was a, a fantastic running back, but he was also getting 90% of the market share. And the question was, what happens if someone comes in and is eating into that? Carlos Hyde. Instant reaction, because we have not had time to digest and think about this. Where are you at now? Instant reaction is this is really disappointing for James Robinson, but we knew something was going to come. We knew we were going to be disappointed at some, point, at some point in time. You cannot have a running back on the roster, especially one that is – you know, five foot nine undrafted free agent who's getting the workload that he was receiving. You you talk about running back attempts and of rushing. You had uh, so many a hundred percent, eighty nine percent, a hundred percent, eighty seven, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, ninety six, one hundred, one hundred. He was the only running back there, and you just can't go into a season without that. So in in you know, on one hand, you have to say this is kind of good news because Carlos Hyde is good enough where I don't think they need to address it okay. Carlos Hyde and James Robinson if that's what they go into the season with I, I won't I won't be shocked now at this point if they bypass running back in the draft or grab a seventh round special teams guy so this is great um, but it clearly means James Robinson will take a step down from what he was last year and that's kind of the projection we've talked about in with, market share in in market share and and therefore I believe in fantasy points he will not be as good in 2021 as he was in 2020 and that's kind of we I've talked I've brought up the Philip Lindsay comp that massive breakout rookie year undrafted free agent, but you're not going to get the same workload going forward. Um, I you know I've been advocating a hold of James Robinson in mm -hmm. in dynasty leagues, um, and he's good. He's a great he's he's a really really good player. He'll be the lead dog, but he will take a step back, and hopefully the team is good. Because if the team is good with James Robinson, um, then he has a chance of sticking around. But what odds do you say that the Jacksonville Jaguars are good in 2021? Yeah, little. Yeah, like 30%? Yeah. Yeah, yeah little. But Robinson was good on a bad team. Uh, I agree with you. Carlos Hyde is good enough to get on the field, but I think you, if you have Robinson on your dynasty team, you should exhale and – feel good about this move they ha they have to have someone else on the on the roster and carlos hyde is not gonna, I just he's dreamed, not going to take over i dreamed they were going to add a fourth round running back you know and, and then this that is was what i the, feel like this is adding a fourth round running back this is adding a this veteran is, uh yeah it's adding a veteran but here's the 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 danger with a fourth round running back sometimes fourth round running backs are excellent and they pop and they're and then in training camp you go holy crap we have to get this guy in the field, not just we have a we have someone to give James Robinson a rest every once in a while. Okay. The Buccaneers are bringing back Gronk on a one-year deal after he allegedly was going to test the free agent market. Yeah, that, that came out this morning that he was going to dip his toes into the free agent market, see what's out there. Mike and I are like, yeah, right. What if there's no <laughs> chance this, he it plays. It was not just us. It was everyone. There's just no chance he plays somewhere was, else without Tom Brady. He was going to retire. Like He for, he forced Oh, when the trade. Patriots were going to yes. trade him to the Lions, he Correct. retired. Yes. He said, oh, no, I will take my ball and I will go home. Of course, he's back with Gronk. We'll see how that plays out. We need to hear about O.J. Howard, uh, how he, he is recovering. But Gronk could be a spot start for your tight end position. And then in this news, mediocre signing of the week. What are the Texans doing? They're bringing in a, a guy for the locker room. They're bringing in someone to support the head coach, the new head coach. What are they doing? They have signed Mark Ingram, formerly of the Ravens, uh, which is there was a co the, the the head coach for the Texans mm -hmm. was on the Ravens team mm -hmm. when the Ravens made the decision we will get better as a football team if Mark Ingram does not play for us right if he 
if he just sits to the side yes. and we put our better running backs in, um, our team will be better. And, well, the running game was. The running game was better because it yes. didn't have Mark Ingram. And so that, he's like, we got to bring that Mark Ingram guy. That's, that's it. What, what is Coley doing? No, I, I gen so I, I, I talk tongue-in-cheek about it, but I genuinely believe that this move is not as much an on-field move for them. This is David Coley coming over, wanting – a, a leader in the locker room who has his back, who he's worked with before, who believes in him. This is a locker room veteran presence. And I honestly, David Coley needs it right now. The The, the locker room is, is, is not the locker room that I would say has the best, you know, buzz around it right now. Yeah, yeah they're they're probably not very united. Does this do anything to David Johnson? Does, will he eat into the workload enough to I matter? mean, probably, but they're going to head into the season with David Johnson and Mark Ingram. Good luck. 2016 uh, would have been great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just jump in the time machine. Uh, so a couple of important offensive line signings because offensive line, we don't really pay attention to much defensive signings unless it's our Arizona Cardinals. Right. Uh, but offensive line is important. The Chargers have signed Corey Lindsley. They, they stole him away from the Packers. They gave him a big boy deal. He is now the NFL's highest paid center. The Chargers had the worst offensive line according to PFF last year. So this is a huge boost for that team. For Austin Eckler, for Justin yes. Herbert, both of those. This is one of those, you, you can't ignore these offensive line changes. You're literally, literally going from the worst to the best at the center position as far as like pressure rate given up. They had the 32nd ranked and they're going to the number one ranked. Um, that's that matters. That helps your your guards on both sides. The offensive line will be better. Um, so man, Austin Eckler, Austin Eckler, a uh, great friend of the show. He's been on yes. the show. We love Austin Eckler. Dude has been playing around with gamma radiation because <laughs> I saw another photo where it's like I thought he was small, but I think he well he he's he's shorter. He's I mean I. I this dude is ripped. That like, dude is jacked. That dude is jacked. I mean, goodness gracious. His veins had muscles. His <laughs> actual veins had muscles in them. It's unbelievable. Uh, the, the Kansas City Chiefs, they said, we don't need our tackles. However, we are bringing in guard Joe Tooney, formerly from the Patriots. They're giving him a five-year, $80 million contract. That's, that's that's huge for a guard. He's now the fifth highest paid lineman and at guard. That's what it was going to take uh, to get him, which is crazy because you think with Pat Mahomes, you know, you might get like a, this. You want to play for for uh, Pat Mahomes? No way, man. Joe, get that money. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't blame him. But this is obviously it's it's funny because if if you didn't know the news where they released, you know, they had three of their five offensive linemen starters. The Chiefs did are no longer with the team. They're gone. So they have to make an adjustment. This is a great signing for them. Very important. But at the end of the day, like I think the Chargers offensive line is clearly and utterly improved. It it went just up. I don't look at the Chiefs offensive line as better now because they signed someone after releasing a couple of important players. Hopefully it stays the same. And he is a guard. So look, it's going to help the offensive line. Hopefully this helps Clyde Edwards Alaire as well because the the guard will help the running game, and the Ravens they brought in guard Kevin Zeitler they gave him a three year deal. Uh, it, do you have any other? Do we have any other breaking news, fellas, that I missed while we, we were need, chatting? I mean, we're itching over here. the The amount of refreshing Twitter and every news feed we can get our hands on, but uh, hopefully. Look, their their silence is is saying nothing is happening. We're yeah. we're watching nothing. The uh, Thursday show it will also will be maybe an even bigger free agent frenzy because it better be this year's interesting. There are so many wide receivers that are good. Even even after the franchise tags of Godwin and Allen Robinson, you have a lot. You've got Will Fuller. You have Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith Schuster. There are a handful of really important big name wide receivers, and they're all waiting for someone to set the market. Like that, nobody wants to be first because okay. they want to come in over the top. So it'll be a couple days. Uh, but once it, once someone well, signs, now Nelson Aguilar has set the market. Oh man, Nelson Aguilar, he's getting paid more per year than Aaron Jones. Mama, don't let your 
children grow up to be running backs. Yes. Well uh, said. Um, but, yeah, I, I, uh, I think Thursday is going to be very exciting with all those wide receivers. Mailbag. Mailbag. Jason, we're going to do the mailbag. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if you were ready for that. Uh, we got off of the website. This is Morton from Denmark. Oh, bonjour. LaVisca Chenault or the rookie pick 110. LaVisca Chenault or the 110 in this year's rookie draft, half PPR, single quarterback. Okay, single quarterback makes a big difference. Because it does. Because the 10th pick in the first round is pretty good. If you're in a uh, super flex, there are four really legitimate first round quarterbacks in this year's draft. So um, in a single quarterback league, it becomes very close. If the Chark news were to happen, um, I would probably take LaVisca Chenault. The Jaguars are denying it. Right. So I'm, oh man, you've got a good quarterback coming in. You've got a head coach that likes to use the uh, you know, multifaceted gadget type player that LaVisca Chenault can be. He showed a lot in his rookie season. He's going into year two, and th that's important. You you get a year earlier of production when you're taking a player versus sure. a rookie, right? Sometimes it takes a year for a player to break out. And even if both players, like let's say LaVisca Chenault and whoever you drafted the 110 have identical careers, 100% the same career, then it's better to have LaVisca Chenault because you're – you fast forwarded that rookie year. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go Lavisca. Okay, but over overtaking the, the overtaking shot. the shot at 110 because the way that I look at it is pretty simple. Like the 110 has the chance to be better than Lavisca for sure, but it also has a chance to be nothing. Lavisca does not have that chance. I think he's going to be solid. Where I mean, are you more? Into no, I, the I'm taking Chenault. Okay, I'm taking Chenault here. There are. Uh, it's a it is a weak running back draft class. There, for our scouting at least, we're locking in. We've got our the big three running backs, the big three, and then there's a couple of guys that if they get draft capital, like, I think they'll like, matter. Like Michael Carter, Kenny Galladay, or Kenny Galladay, uh, uh, Kenny Gainwell. There's a couple guys here and there that maybe a team surprises us with a day two pick on them. But, but there are a lot. It is deep at wide receiver. Yes, there's a lot of wide. So the one, the one ten could be a better wide receiver than Chenault. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna take the the fast forward a year and take Chenault here. We got uh, an Instagram question from KT Schultz ninety nine. Which Giants wide receiver has the most dynasty value? Kenny Galladay. Oh, you're calling it. Um, you are calling it. I'm just saying they are really trying to go get some big name wide receiver. Um, and that's who I would want. Otherwise, if we're just talking guys on the wrong, I expect them to do it. I expect one of these big name wide receivers to go to the Giants. That's who I'd want. Otherwise, it's Sterling Shepard for me because I just think he's a solid wide receiver. All right. Uh, Dynasty question here from James in Texas. I picked up Tyler Johnson in Dynasty in hopes that Chris Godwin would sign elsewhere. Excellent. That's a very proactive move. Uh, with Godwin being tagged, should I drop Johnson? Half PPR, I would say no. You're not going to drop Tyler Johnson at this point. Who are you going to drop him for? Right, uh, number one. But this is what you have to do in dynasty. It, you have to just take shot after shot after shot, and of projection of calling what what's going to happen. If if Godwin had left, that would have been an incredible signing for your dynasty team. Tom Brady with Mike Evans and Tyler Johnson. Like that that's what it likely would have ended up. So don't despair. Keep taking those shots. Uh and we had a, a question that I th I thought kind of fit into there. This one's from Well, uh, before you move oh, on. Oh. Um you have Tyler I, Johnson I, thoughts. Yeah, I do have Tyler Johnson thoughts. I think when when the when the Chris Godwin franchise tag came out, I know that you want Chris Godwin to just leave, but there was, and still is, there's still time to come to terms on a longer-term contract, but the fact that they've signed all their other players, I, I think that Godwin is one year for the Buccaneers. Like, he's he'll play on the franchise, and I don't think they will be able to afford him. They're going to be in some cap trouble here um, because of all the signings they're doing today. So, Tyler Johnson, I expect, 
I know you don't want to wait two years for that third year breakup, but I think that he will have his opportunity. That is a part of dynasty is you got to have patience with some of these players. Uh, an Instagram question here that I thought tied into it, Jason. How do I get an edge over other Foot Clan members in my league? Okay. Uh, well, the, the way that I thought it tied in was you're going to have to if you're like if you're in a dynasty league, you're going to have to take a little bit more risk. You're going to have to swing a little harder of trying to be out ahead of these Tyler Johnsons. You need to you need to be a couple moves ahead, and these aren't moves ahead where you're uh, basing it off of absolutely nothing. Know a team's cap situation. Know a team's contract situation, and and be making moves accordingly over those things trade for players who are in those situations where it dynasty teams playing dynasty you get fatigue with certain players on your bench that have been there they've been there for years i have had gerald everett on my bench since the year he was drafted i have started gerald everett maybe three times mm -hmm. in four years or whatever it is and I have been holding on to him. This is my moment. This this is everything. This is your moment. <laughs> Thank you. Of what happens now with Gerald Everett, now that he is a free agent, he has said goodbye to the Rams. And and he could be a legitimate fantasy option. Yes, that he is could. Very viable. This is why I don't like drafting tight ends and rookie drafts. Because it's so often you're waiting for the second contract, second team. It's like, I don't want to hold on to them. Kyle Pitts might change Pitts things. Pitts is a different. But outside of outliers. Um yeah, and, and I would just say, look, if you're playing with all Foot Clan members and, and uh, they're all in it, they're all on top, it's it's going to be sometimes about speed. Who gets the, the first person to the trade block? Who gets to the waiver wire first or, you know, is just the most aggressive? Yeah, see, that's what I mean. you got to be a little bit riskier, aggressive. Maybe you make that trade. You're trading away uh, someone like Dalvin Cook, even though it feels bad at the time. Uh, but you just got to be out ahead of things. It's 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 tough because you're going to miss far more than you're going to hit. But when you hit, oh, it is sweet. It yeah. is very sweet. Uh, Instagram, this one's from Tim. Miles Sanders. <laughs> I don't like this question. Is Miles Sanders a top 10 back this year? Oh, brother. Yeah. Top 10. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say he's not a top 10. There's going to be 10 players I like more. Than Miles Sanders, there's so many question marks on the offense. I I do think Miles Sanders is good. He'll he'll be a he'll be a really good option. Uh, if if the line was top fifteen, I'd probably say yes. But I I think he's going to be outside the top ten. Um, you know, and and with the draft capital, the Eagles are at what like I think uh, pick six. That is going to be really interesting. You know, I'm a big Jalen Hurts believer, and I think Miles Sanders will play great with Jalen Hurts, but there are some quarterbacks, because this is a really loaded, deep quarterback, uh, you know, in, in theory, that the first-round talent is supposed to be there for four quarterbacks this year. Um, it might not be as good. Even, even if they grab a, a better quarterback in real NFL, it might not be as good for Miles Sanders as – with Jalen Hurts. I would like Miles Sanders with Jalen Hurts. Miles Sanders or Josh Jacobs? Oh, that's so close. I'd go Josh Jacobs. Miles Sanders or Akers or Dobbins? I would the go sophomores. Akers or Dobbins. All right. And what about uh, uh, Vaney Muscles? Austin Eckler for sure. I Honestly, saying this, maybe he's not my top 15. But he's he's still good. I'm I'm not saying Miles Sanders is bad sure. or someone I'm trying to get rid of or I don't believe in him. I, I think there are better options. Like we're we're in on Dobbins and Cam Akers. I, I, we believe in those players this I'm, year. This one's very important for our friendship. Oh no! Oh no! I know. Don't ask this one, man. Don't do it. Antonio Gibson uh, or Miles Sanders? Oh man! <laughs> um, for I, the brand. For the brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the quarterback in Washington? It doesn't matter. He's Antonio Gibson, baby. I for the brand, <laughs> I'll say Antonio Gibson. What do you actually say though? You you would you rather have Miles? I wanted the cop out of for the brand, Mike. Um I say it. Say it. I'll go Antonio Gibson. You're, okay. I will. Oof, I, I will. was I was loaded with an insult and I almost fired <laughs> it off. <laughs> 
premature <laughs> insult. <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, all right, we're going to wrap up the show here. want to thank Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site on the known internet. Right now, what do we got? We got Cam Akers signed jersey, the current bid price, just 68 bucks. Then Alvin Kamara signed Saints full-size helmet, the current bid, just $78. And there's a DJ Moore jersey right now, $33. Pristine Auction has new stuff every single day. You go you go to pristineauction.com. You sign up with the code BALLERS because you're going to get a $10 credit off of your first victory. You don't. You only pay for what you win on Pristine Auction, and you can go on to it every single day. Yeah, you see a price you like, you bid on it. If, if, if that's not the price that it ends at, you're, you don't pay anything. It's great. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully Thursday brings us uh, a little bit more of the frenzy, more of the mania. More wide receivers is what you mean. More good things for my dynasty team is really, <laughs> That'll it's never happen. really what I'm saying. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.